So every day of your life, you need to wake up saying, Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Over my children, more grace. Over my family, more grace. Over my business, more grace. Over my endeavors, more grace. Over my ministry, more grace. Raton Shapalatasa. for the privilege that you are our God thank you for all that you have done thank you for all that you are doing thank you for all that you will ever do we say be thou glorified in the name of Jesus Amen. Lord as we look into your word we ask today that let light break forth Amen. let there be miracles Amen. let there be signs Amen. let there be wonders Amen. Father, we ask that you would invade every life with the fullness of your glory. Amen. That at the end of this service, Lord, will have the full cause to give you thanks. Amen. Angels of God's spirit, take over this atmosphere. Amen. Do the work only God can do. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. And in the name of God the Holy Ghost. Amen. For in Jesus' victorious name we are prayed. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, we'll take God's word, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, in the New Living Translation. I like to read it in your New Living Translation. You already know what I'm talking about. The power of what? Of choice in marriage. So after this scripture, then we can please sit down. Can we read together like a mass choir? One, two, go. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death. 
between blessings and causes. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you will choose life so that you and your descendants might what? Live. You know, the Bible did not say that you and your descendants will live. Might. Meaning that it's what? Dependent on your choices. You can please sit down. God bless you. So we'll be looking at the power of choices this morning. Are we ready for God's word? Oh, yes, sir. And this, of course, has to do with marriage. Some of us, it's seemingly like it's already late because you've made the choice already. So, but within your choice, God can still help you. Yes. And some have not even ventured into the choice at all. It's still better for you. Are we still here? Yes. Now, when a child is born, when a child is born, a child looks like the decisions of the father and the mother. Are we still here? Yes. But when a child eventually dies, maybe grows up to die, you would eventually look like what? Your own decisions. Is anybody still here? Yes. Life is a bouquet of choices. It's a bouquet of choices. No one is free from making choices at any point in time. Don't think you would ever get to a point in your life where you would just be free. There will be no need. You will still make a choice. Being in today's service was what? A choice. It was a choice. You could have decided that, no, I will stay at home. You could have decided that, no, I'm tired of serving God. But you decided to come. Are you still here? Yes. So it's a bouquet. You would always need to consistently make choices. There is no such thing as indecision in destiny. I've said it before. There's no such thing as what? Sitting on the fence. You know, there are times that maybe we say, okay, all those that are for, raise up your hand. All those that are against, raise up your hand. Then we have what? Undecided. That is only theoretical. In destiny, there is nothing like what? Undecided. Your decision not to decide is what? Is a decision. Are we still here? Yes. So there are three major seasons in the life of any family. How many major seasons? Three. Three. Please, let's listen carefully. Because I will not be too much saying I prophesy today. Three major seasons. The first season is the season where the parents make all the choices. The parents make all the decisions. Are we aware? Yes. Do you know there's a particular age you are the one that decides even up to the food? You will tell them we are eating beans and if you like, say you are not eating, you will sleep like that. And because you are the one making all the choices, you are the one taking all the decisions. That's a phase in life. Then there's another phase in life as life progresses. You know, parents are growing, the children too are growing. It's not as if only parents are growing and the children are static. It gets to another se segment in your life or another period where it is joint decision, shared decision. It could now be 40, 60, 60, 40, 70, 30. Whatever formula you arrive out in, are at in your family, but it's shared decision. At those points, you will hear things like, oh no, daddy, at this point, I want to go to this school. I, I don't like this school. I, I prefer Caprison. I don't like this one. I prefer this. You understand? Some, you would allow it at a decision. At, at some point. But the third one is the stage where the children are the ones making virtually all the decisions for even you and what? And themselves. And that's the truth. Everybody will eventually get to the point where what? Where your children will be the one taking most of the decision. So it tells me that how you undo the first two stages of life will determine what will eventually happen to you yourself in your old age. Is anybody here? Yes. Did you just understand what I just said? Yes. yes. No, I, I'm not getting your Did you just understand what I said? Oh, yes. So meaning that you need to train your children or your people on how to make what? Right choices from their childhood and cradle. Because your life ultimately will be, will be affected by it. Now, let me tell you, love is a decision. Love is what? Is a calculated risk. Now, you know, lots of people would wake up and say, I love this person. 
and I want to marry this person. Now, yes, the feeling might be there. But you don't enter into marriage by what? By just a feeling. It's what is a calculated risk. And now, today, I will try to tell us three major things that your choices must be based on. How many major things? Three. three major. That your choices must be what? Based must on. be based on. The first one I will look at is it must be value-based. Somebody say value. 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 So what is value? Value is your own core decisions for your life. The standards and self-discipline that you have set to do what? To guard your life. Meaning that you have looked at your life that these are the sets of rules that I want to govern my life. Meaning that your values are like your constitution for living. These are things you will not go outside of. Is anybody still here? Yes. Meaning that anybody that you are going to get married to or you are going to make a choice to stay with all the days of your life must what? Must have same core destiny focus. Meaning that if the person's destiny focus is not 100% or at least 90 something percent aligned with your own, there would eventually be problems. In case you don't know, those that are married know that marriage is the most intensive relationship you would ever enter into. Whether spiritually, emotionally, psychologically and physically. Now, let me tell you, there are people you find in the workplace and you'll see them as tough men, tough women, jumping, shouting, threatening everybody. But when you get home, they are weak men or weak women. Why? Because all those bold faces does not work at home. You will discover that their spiritual life, emotions, everything has what? Has been drained by another person. Destiny focus. Same core destiny focus is anybody still here oh, yes i'll say this to us please don't ever lower your standard for anybody neither should you lower your standard at any circumstance you know why because the people that you are lowering your standard for they are not they will not see it as a privilege for them they have seen it as what as your natural lifestyle and that's why when you get into marriage you don't begin to expect that eh, i pitied you and eh, this kind of thing i did not used to accept it no sir you have started accepting it is anybody still here oh, yes what you would naturally not accept don't pretend about it for a second now do you know that no matter how you are in this life there's somebody looking for you Oh, you don't know if you are a drug addict there is somebody that his own desire or our own desire is to marry a what a drug addict i'm telling you i was watching an interview one day they were interviewing few ladies and they were asking them a drug baron or a regular guy who would you marry most of them drug baron drug baron and you that you are in church you are wondering are they okay and they are okay in their own world that's who they want that's who they want so the way you are, there is somebody that likes you like that. Whether it will now end you in heaven or end you a good life, that's the one me I can't guarantee. But the way you are, somebody's looking for you like that. You are fat, somebody's looking for you. You are slim, somebody's looking for you. You are tall, somebody's looking for you. You are short, somebody's looking for you. You are fair, somebody's looking for you. You are dark, somebody's looking for you. Hallelujah. So don't lower your standard for anybody. Be what? Yourself. Lots of our problem arrives or starts from the point where we start to do what? Start to change what? The goalpost. Because the real you will eventually still do what? Come out. Your real desires will still eventually do what? It will still come out. Are we still here? Yes. The things that you are pretending about today, I can tell you 100% it will be responsible for your crashed marriage. Those things that you are pretending about, that you are feeling, eh, we can manage it, eh, we can patch it, we can do it. You know the person has anger issues. You people have not even spoken twice. He has slapped you three times already. 
and it tells you that it is a mistake that I don't even understand how my hand moves fast. I don't get it. I have speed, speed. And you are saying truly he made a mistake. It's a mistake, it's a mistake. That is what something that you are accepting. Tomorrow you will say, no, I can't be beaten like this. And what will happen? What you decided to patch up would eventually do what? Come crumbling down. Is anybody still here? Yes. And it's the same way. If you are a church person, carry your church person where? On your head, on your forehead. There are people that are looking for what? Church people. Yes, sir. And that's why if you read your Bible, the Bible says what? The helmet of what? Do they wear helmet on the leg? No, sir. Anybody that is putting on an helmet and he enters this auditorium, do you know he's the first person you will notice? Yes. Why? Because there's something... So that's the same way you should carry your salvation. Put it on the way the Bible says what? An helmet of salvation. There is somebody still looking for a saved brother or sister. Are you still here? Oh, yes. Areas of value. Now, let me quickly tell you some area. You know, the first major point is what? Making value what? Based choices. Now, the first area is parenting style. Do you know that me, I've come to realize that there are about maybe just like three major, um, parenting styles. The first one is the hard discipline. That everything is militarized. Yes, there are people like that. It's a militarized zone. That is their parenting style. That is what they love. That is what they plan to what? Implement in the future. And there is what? The democracy style. 100%. You know, sometimes you'll be telling some parents, look at what your daughter or your son is doing. They say, hey, leave on I in choice. Now, what do you want to do? So you that you what? You are 100% what? Militarized. And you marry somebody that is saying what? Hey, leave on, leave on. What will eventually happen? You will start to argue. No, you cannot do. You can, before you know it, the children will be what? The source of the problem. Because of how to discipline them. And do you know there are people that also run what? A mixed pattern. Partly democracy. Partly what? Militarized. In some areas of this home, no decision. I will take it. In some, we can discuss it. So you need to know what is the person's parenting style. Because ultimately, it would affect what? Both the spiritual and the moral level of those children. Is anybody still here? Yes, sir. The second one is the person's honor system. What did I say? Person's honor system. Honor system. Now, you know, lots of us come into people's lives and we believe that because the person is in love, so to say, that the person we forgo the world and come for you is the person Jesus. He leaves the 99 to come for only you. Even mathematically, it doesn't make sense to leave what? 99. And be looking for what? For one. But that is the love of the Father that God is telling us that he can go any length. But human beings are not like that. Somebody that stayed 25 years, 26, 27 years, with the biological parents that gave birth to him and cannot value or respect them. You think you that he met three months ago, you think you have more value than them. You know, sometimes we like to deceive ourselves. You will say, no, he doesn't try with other, he doesn't try it with me, can do it with other people. You are deceiving yourself. Somebody that was with his friends from cradle, childhood, and does not have any honor for them. You see the way he relates or she relates with her friends, insults them, talks to them anyhow, but you think that because you, you have entered his life now, that suddenly, automatically, everything will change. Deception. What is the person? Let, check how the guy talks to his father. Check how he talks to his mother. Check how he relates with his siblings. That is how you will have an idea of what will eventually what happen to you. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. No, are we following what I'm saying? Oh, yes. yes Money is the third one. Is anybody still here? Yes. yes sir. Money is a very good servant, but a bad master. If you master money, you will have a good life. But if money masters you, you would eventually completely finish your life. So money is like a servant. 
If you are in charge of money, you would have a good life. But when money is the one controlling you, then there will be a problem. So the first question on under money is how does he or she view money? Have you not heard of people that they were the ones that used their wife for, for what ritual? No, have you not heard of it? Yes. Of people that would tell them, see, my husband just made 20 million. Please, this is where we pass. He doesn't give me money. Please help me collect the one he's supposed to give me. Help me, help me. And in the process of helping, they will kill the man. So what is it? Is it, does he see or does she see money as a medium of exchange or money is the God that the person is serving? Do you know there are people that they will tell you, see, see, I can joke with anything, but I can kill for money. Don't try me. Even my father, he knows. Ask him. He knows. If he talks to me about money, I can kill him. Somebody that is already talking like that. Don't you know that this is what? A ritualist in training. Oh, you don't know. You are waiting for him to do the ritual with you. You don't know this kind of person. is what? A ritualist that is in training. So what does the, how does the person view money? How does he view money? Does the person value money more than relationships? Do you know there are people that they don't care the relationship? Now, for example, they've been with somebody that has helped them for 10 years. This person sent them to school, trained them, helped their children, but they had the day to cheat the person for 20,000 naira. Some people will still do what? They will still cheat the person. Not caring about the relationship. So these are the things to check. What is the person's value system for what? For money. Somebody that is always telling you that my elder brother is owing me 10,000. This other one, 50,000. In fact, that first one, I'm not talking to him again because of this money. And I can, I can stop talking to anybody because of money. Already know that what? That this person serves the God of what? Of money. And when you make that choice, eventually, you will be running after pastors for what? Deliverance, counseling, and that demon is what? The demon of the choice that what? You made. So now, what is the person's attitude to money as well? The, person is, the first one is how the person views money. The second one is what? His attitude to money. Do you know that some people, their own attitude to money is what? Stingy. Sting. Do you know some people can allow their child die because of 5,000 error? The guy will be telling you, I've saved one million. You don't get it. I need to clear that car next week. They say, sir, but your son is dying. He say, no, that you don't get I can't touch that money. I can't touch it. We need to look for another means to get it. They say your child is dying. Say no, you are not getting it. There are people like that. So you need to know the person's attitude to money. There are some people, extravagance is what? Is their own money culture. And there are three things you can do with money. You can spend money. You can what? Save money. You can what? Invest money. So you also need to know what the person's attitude towards the three. Some people, extreme savings. There is nothing you can do. It's just to what? To be seeing the account balance doing what? Rising. Rising. It, it gives them joy. You know, they look at that this week. 200, 300, 400, 500. Okay, what will you do with this money? No, make it a rise. Make it a rise. I like the way they go up. Make it a rise. <laughs> and you... All what you like is what? Disney World. Disney World. Have you, have you seen that event center? Let's go there. Have you seen that shop? Let's go there. And the guy is saying, what, what are you saying? Who is spend? I can't spend any money. Oh. And after a while, there is confusion. Because you never knew the person's pattern. And there are some. They are investment crazy. Anything they can do what? Invest. They don't care. They can take that risk. But every time he wants to invest, you are the one shouting, don't try it, oh, you cannot. Oh. So all of these things eventually do what? They become issues. And some will tell you that my motto for life is in Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. Take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow has enough trouble to do. Please bring me five as soon. Give me five, give me five. Tomorrow we take care of what? 
Okay. It's scriptural. Matthew chapter 6, verse what? 34. And is a swing your financial destiny away. <laughs> so these are the things that you need to what? Begin to find out before what? Putting your head into. And this person does not know that the Bible is talking about what? Anxiety and what? And worrying. God is not against planning. Is anybody still here? Yes. Now, on that money, what is the person's giving like? Do you know there are people that it does not matter how close you are to them. If you want to die for 2,000 naira, the person has 2 million. You say, brother, we need to pray. <laughs> Let me lay hands on you. This 2,000, my God, shall supply your need. He has 2 million, oh, but to just give. You know, so even family member, it does not matter. Father, it doesn't matter. Siblings is immaterial. Mother. The, so once you know that this kind of person is like that, the person will not give to you. Don't think you have a, another higher anointing called love. There's nothing like that. He will do it for a while, but he will go back to doing what? His normal self. You know, somebody said the story jokingly to portray hell. He said, you know, every day people, pastors are saying, don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of torment. So rapture happened. And he went to hell. Or he was in his dream. So he saw when he got to hell. Hell was looking good. They were playing nice music. Everybody was calm. And all of that. No fighting, nothing. Everything. Order and all. Ah, the guy said these pastors can lie. That after all what they've said. Look at how beautiful hell is. Calm and order. The guy said I will come to hell. I'll come to hell. So he died. Real now. He died. And went to hell and saw the real hell. Fire everywhere. Killing, stabbing, throwing. Out. And the guy said, what happened the last time I came? He said, no, we were campaigning then. We were campaigning then. We were looking for people then. Now we have what? We have caught you. We are now what? The real hell. That is how some people campaign before what? Marriage. So when you have entered, then what? You see the real thing. Don't, don't fall for that trap. Is anybody still here? Yes. How does the person give to fellow people? How does the person give to God? Because you know, eventually, now let me tell you, I've studied people's lives. When they are young, there's a lot of room for misbehavior. But as people begin to get older, you begin to hear nearer my God to thee nearer to thee if though it be because they are looking at it that no 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 this suffering knife i go and continue it in hell is what double jeopardy so they're already singing nearer my god to thee so as people go higher most of the time they start getting spiritual but you cannot what undo the decisions you have made when what when you were still thinking foolishly so by then, you will be thinking, I want to give my first fruits to God. I want to sow a seed. I want to buy fan in church. I want to buy, and the person is saying, what is that? No, we don't buy such things here. Uh, you are a pastor, then be thief now. You don't know. And all of that. So at that point, what? Trouble starts coming. What is the person's giving attitude to God and to men? The next one on that value system is time. How much does he or she value time? You know, like the GS taught many years ago, the GS said what? You can spend time or you can what? Invest time. So for every time you are doing something not productive, what are you doing? You are spending time. But for every time you are doing something that adds to your destiny, what are you doing? You are investing that time. So if you are meeting somebody that all the person is thinking of is, okay, I'm going to flex now. Know that what? That person will flex away your destiny. Let's while away time. People that every time is about what? Whiling away time. Whiling away destiny. They've never said to you before that let's do something that adds what? To your destiny. Know that even when you get into marriage, that person will do what? will while away your time. They are married people here, yeah, so lots of these things I'm saying, they can relate with it. Are we still here? Yes. Value system. 
You know, that's the first thing we are talking about. The next one is morality. And I'll say this, that please stop feeling special in this area. Anybody that can break his moral value system for you is not worth banking on. So don't think, hey, no, it is it's because it's me. No, sir. They will do it for what? Another person. And marriage does not cure or stop immorality. I'm telling you. At least I'm married and I know that. Marriage does not what? Stop. In fact, go and check it. You will find out that when you are married, it's even easier to be immoral. I'm telling you. Go to the workplaces. That's where you will know the real thing. Married people. Because they will know that you, you don't want noise. You don't want your family to know. Me too, I don't want my family to know. So we'll keep quiet. But the single person, no, I will make noise. So marriage in itself is not the cure. What is the cure for immorality is what is a value system. That it does not matter who it is. I will not what? I will not change my stand. So before you go into making a decision, know how strong the person's value system is about morality. Because this is the same system that the parents will pass to the children. You would most effectively pass what? Your moral standards to what? To your children. Because you know that you are weak in this area, it makes it difficult to be firm against your children in that area. Very difficult. Especially this generation, where they can see you doing it. They will tell you now. You know, you tell your children sometimes, close your eyes, let us pray. They say, but daddy, you are opening your eyes now. Daddy, you to close your eyes. Say, okay, okay. And it's because I want to see whether you, they say, me too, I want to see whether you close your eyes. <laughs> so you tell your child, no, don't drink. He said, Daddy, but I was the one that bought the last one for you now. Just let's share it 50-50. So how, how do you have the moral right to stop them? Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. yes sir. So when your choice is value-based, the next thing is let your choice be what? Future-based. What did I say? Future-based. Any choice that is 100% about now, is a choice that would eventually do what go wrong. Where you are going to in destiny and in life is far more important than where you are now. It's like somebody taking a decision, you want to travel, and you are taking all your decisions based on the motor park. You know eventually you will not go anywhere. Because you must think of all these things I want to buy, how will I carry them? All these things that I want to load of myself. Sometimes you have the money, but you won't buy it because you know that what? Carry, you know when you want to fly sometimes, you have the money, but you look at it, no, 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 this one, no, it's not, no, it's a overweight, overweight, over, drop it, I know this one is not important. You know, for those of you that have people abroad, you pack my gear, pack everything for them. You say, let me take it there. Yes, they will collect it from you, but they will just give it to someone in Nigeria and escape like that. Overweight. So your destiny, where you are going to, is far more important than where you are. So don't let all your decisions rest on where you are now. Marry people or make decisions. Discern the future of people. Discern their future potential. And that is why you need the Holy Spirit in your life. There are people that are very rich today. But in a matter of years, there will be examples of how not to destroy your finances. So if you make the this, you know there have been very rich families in this country before. But you know there, there, are, there are families that now, their name cannot even open curtain, not to talk of a door. You know the doors of today, serious luck. Your name must be strong to open it. But some 30, 40 years ago, those names will crash any door. So don't marry based on where you are. Marry with what? Discernment for the future. And there are people that are on the floor and on the ground today. But tomorrow, their names will open nations. How to discern the future. 
Is anybody still here? Yes. Do you know that a rich man's son is not a rich man or a rich boy? You don't know. A rich man's son is what? Is not a rich boy. Is just what? The son of a rich man. Because the day his father does not exist anymore. The real person you are dealing with will come out. You will now know whether he has the capacity to reproduce all that he was enjoying under his father. You know, and lots of people, they married people thinking that is the person they married. No, actually in their mind, they married the person's father. No, I'm telling you, there are people that entered marriages based on the person's mother. They have connection. They have wealth. They have the, it's not, you are not focusing on the real person. So something just happens like this. Um, what is it called? That just happened to the world now. COVID. And so, COVID. And something just happens. And the two parents are gone. And you now discover that you married a proper idiot. Somebody that cannot think. <laughs> and you are now wondering, oh God, what happened to me? It's because you, in your mind, you married the person's parents. So let your decision be what? Future based. Because your life is what? On a journey. Don't make permanent decisions on temporary things. What did I just say? Don't make permanent decisions on temporary things. You know, because we are believers, marriage is a permanent decision. Abby? Yes. So don't make what? Permanent decisions on what? On temporary. You know, one of the temporary things we make decisions on is what? Is beauty. She fine. Come on, see shape. You don't know. If she just give birth now, the shape has gone. Pa, disappeared. You know, even ask many married people. You know, I was asking one of my brothers one day. I said, do you even, sometimes, do you just look at your wife and say, she's fine? He said, I, I don't get that kind of time. I'm thinking of how we will pay bills. So, as she's cleaning the house, everything is organized. That's the beauty. That's the beauty. I said, eh, eh, that is it. When you get married, you will be inside. You, all this shape, you'll not even remember. All what you are concerned is that as long as you have peace, she's fine. As long as you have joy, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But you know, sometimes people will be telling you, Madam, sir, why would you want to leave this pretty lady? You look at this one. This one is the devil, now. Nah. This one can't be fine. And everybody else can see that she's... But what you are seeing is what? Is beyond the physical. So don't make permanent decisions on what? Beauty. The person could have an accident in the kitchen or something, hot oil pour somewhere, and all of those beauty is gone. Let the beauty be what? The one that is inside. You know, Proverbs 31 verse 30 says that, But a woman that feareth the Lord, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord shall what? Shall be praised. Many people are in love with the packaging, but they hate the content. But that's the reality of some people's marriage. Yo. When they want to make that choice, they are what? In love with the what? The packaging. You understand? It's, it's like you go to a shop, you tell them, I want to buy this soap. Remove the soap. Just give me the, give, give, just give me the carton. Give, just give me the carton. Most people think you are sick. Just say, no, 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 this soap is fine. I like the carton. I don't need the soap. Take out the soap. That's what some of us are doing. You are not checking the real thing you are buying. Beauty is the packaging. Is anybody still here? Yes. The next thing you should not make permanent decision on is what? Is riches. Money is like rain. It does not fall forever. So you cannot make permanent decisions on it. You cannot make permanent decisions on it. Let's read 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 19. Let me show us something there. So that you can know even the scripture supports it. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's read together. I want to go. Charge them that are what? That are rich in this world. That they be not what? I minded, not trust in what? What did the Bible say? Uncertain what? Riches. But in the living God, who giveth us richly what? All things to enjoy. Verse 18. That 
that they do good and they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Verse 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time what to come, that they may lay hold of what? Eternal life. So even the Bible tells us that riches is what? Is uncertain. So don't get into it because of the person as what can disappear tomorrow. Do you know a rich man can be a poor man by the reason of just one bad investment? Yes, sir. So do you now say because of that, you are done with the marriage? Is anybody still here? Yes. yes so the third major thing that your choice should be based on, it must be kingdom based. What did I just say? Kingdom based. You know, lots of times, when we want to make our marital decisions, we make them just because of ourselves. We don't have what? The kingdom at the back of our minds. And this is what the other religions don't do. They are concerned about what? One, the continuity of what? Of the faith. They are concerned about what? How long their faith will last and dominate what? The earth. But lots of times we are just after the emotional part of it and not worried about spiritual compatibility. And soon enough, when you get into marriage, you will begin to discover that some things in life is not just physical, but what? Spiritual. You know, when I was working with someone, he said something to me. He said the truth is when he wanted to marry his wife, it wasn't really about love. He said, but what he could discern was what? Spiritual alignment. Meaning that his destiny and her destiny spiritually does what? It aligns. Do you know there are some of us today, right now, you know that there is a grace of God upon your life. And you know that someday, God will make demands on that grace. Yet, you will put that aside and make decision over a lukewarm believer. Or make a decision over a carnal believer. But you know the, beauty thing, the beautiful thing about God? If he had decided to call you, he will still call you. Only that now, after he has called you or given you that responsibility, you will now start doing that responsibility in pain, in tears, in sorrow, in regret. For example, you would have prayed and fasted for a meeting that God as I go and worship today, let everywhere turn around with your presence and all of that. He will just look at you. Where are you going to? Church, this traffic will just give you one slap. Pah! And you are coming to the altar. You are angry. You are angry. You are shaking. You are and all of that. Yes. It was because you discountenanced what? Spiritual alignment. But no, God will still be calling you. His gift and his callings are what? Without repentance. So please, at this stage of your life, don't just marry without kingdom-based values. There are people that what will send them to hell is what? Marriage. Marriage. The choice they made. The choice. Because their spirituality. You know, I was telling somebody yesterday. I said, naturally. Let, no, I, I don't even believe anybody's 100% on fire for God. There's still your humanity. So maybe 90 something percent for some people. Good. And I said, when you now get married, you will first lose like 30 percent spirituality. <laughs> no, have you not been married before? 30 percent of your spirituality will just disappear first. You now, ah, God, no, I cannot continue like this. You now start to struggle. We start praying. We start fasting. We start, no, God, I cannot. Continue. Now imagine your spirituality before you married was 20 percent. You are still owing us spirituality. Meaning that by the time you're married, you are, you are totally gone. <laughs> and all what God decided to do with your life will what? Be eroded. There are people God has called you that he wants you to be what? A kingdom financier. Some he wants you to be singers that will shake the nations. 
Some want you to be preachers that your voice will be heard all over the world, changing it. But the choice you make now will determine whether you would achieve that thing with peace, with ease, or you will still do it with suffering. So kingdom based, kingdom based. When you are married, marry for the kingdom. No, no, I didn't say marry for the church. I said marry for what? The kingdom. The kingdom. The things God will want to do through you. Marry with a consciousness of it. You know some people, they are seated, but for every time somebody comes to lead prayer, the Spirit of God jolts them that that should have been you. Some people, another person is preaching, they are watching on television, and when they see the person, the Spirit of God tells them that that should have been you. But you know that the kind of decisions you've made already has what? Has dis distracted you off that thing. But the Spirit of God will never still let you rest. Every time you will keep knowing that this should have been you. Is anybody still here? Yes. Do you remember something? Do you remember something? I'm asking, do you remember something? Oh, yes. In the Bible, the one in the Bible, not this one. No. The one in the Bible. You remember him, right? You remember they got to a time when he wanted to get married. God raised him as a deliverer for what? For Israel. And God had just put Israel in the hand of what? The Philistines. But when his parents were telling him that Samson, have you not found a woman amongst our people? No, he said, no, get her for me. She what? She pleases me. Oh, eventually, you know how the life of Samson ended. Samson that was supposed to be a great deliverer was now somebody pushing meals. The Bible said, yes, he slew more people in death than when what? When he was alive. However, he prayed a foolish prayer. Lord, let me die with these people. So the full potential for his life, Samson and ministry, Samson could not achieve it. So please don't make that mistake. So don't make marital choices as a reward for certain favors. Do you know there are people that somebody has really invested in their life, has been an helper of destiny. Please, there are other ways to appreciate the person making a marital choice or decision based on that is not wise you don't marry as a reward is anybody still here oh yes you don't marry out of blackmail or threats you don't make choices you know some people will tell you that see if you don't if you don't do this i will kill myself please let him go ahead let him go ahead let, or let her go ahead you are not the one that killed the person but somebody cannot bully you into what into marrying him or I will keep myself. Oh God, go ahead. If you are free, go, go. go. Yes. But you now use that as a reason. I, I did not want him to die. Nobody wants to hear that. Oh. You know, some people would even use spirituality to pressure you. The Lord just spoke to me in the middle of the night. Tell him your ears are open. You didn't hear anything. Tell him, in fact, I cleaned my ear because of this. I still didn't hear. Tell God to tell me. Somebody will just come and use spirituality to cover your eye. The Lord spoke precisely 12.08 a.m. And he only said three things. Or two things. Maria. So tell them you did not what? You did not. So don't let anybody use spirituality to make you make a choice. Because Okay, let me say another one. Don't also make a decision based on people's recommendation only. You know, people can look at you and say, oh, brother Toby, um, I see you're a spiritual brother. Why not consider sister this or sister that and all of that? You know, that's a recommendation. But when you accept to make that decision, it has become what? Your decision and your choice. You don't want to tell nobody that hey, it was this person that advised me. Nobody cares. Even if it were your parents that advised you, you have what? You have made the decision already. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. Do we know what submission is? I'm asking, do we know what submission is? I'm almost done. Yes. You know, like they will say, the word is broken into two. Sub, then mission. Meaning that we are on a mission 
but there is a sub one, there's a smaller one under it. Meaning that, for example, when a woman submits to a man, it must be a man that is what? On a mission, and the woman is just what? Behind him in that what? Mission. So the first error is to marry somebody that is going nowhere. Because what you have just done is to join what? A static bus, a bus without engine. But do you know that normally all of us don't have problems with submission? Do you know? Yes, sir. Yes. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And why did you do it? Eh? You submitted to me. I'm the one holding the microphone. You can say your own later, but not now. I see people coming in and the ushers is saying what? To the left. How many people did? On this side, how many people did the ushers tell you to sit down here today? So raise it properly now. So most of you, the ushers were the one that... Why didn't you slap them and go here? When you... See, let me tell you, the time people have the highest level of submission is when they are in the aeroplane. Pass in your seatbelt. This plane is about to... Jesus, 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 Jesus. What do we do now? What do we do? Everybody, fast... It's, it's already done. Yes, yes. Switch off your phones. Why didn't you challenge the pilot? Did you see the pilot certificate before you submitted? When you go to hospitals, when the doctor says, Sir, so you need to lie down for injection or we examine you. Why do you do it? Because you don't want to die now. So you see, at the end of the day, submission is not our problem. Our problem is what the person that you are actually submitting to. So, you will not want to submit when you have missed everything that I've said today. So, when you have by yourself chosen a foolish person, somebody that is heading nowhere, somebody that you cannot respect his intelligence, you cannot respect his decision, somebody that you cannot respect how he thinks and how he views life, naturally, you will what? You will resist that, those decisions. So this is where the problem, the problem is not the submission. The problem is at the entry point, which is what? The choice that you made. Is anybody still here? Yes. Marriages don't just fail. Failed marriages are the results of what? Wrong choices. Is anybody still here? Yes. yes. But do you know that even if your marriage is turbulent, even if it's turbulent, you still have a choice to make. That the marriage is not going well. You still have a choice to make. One of the choices you have that you can make is to do nothing. Just continue to look at it. Ah, I want daddy income. I don't know. Mommy income. I don't know. So how are you people today? We don't know. So you can decide not to do anything. The second thing you can decide to do is to make it work. It's a choice. It's a decision. You can decide that what above every other thing i will make this one what to work whether it means me sacrificing some things allowing some things to go the errors that i made in that i didn't look at some things while i was i was forgo all of those things i will sacrifice everything to make it. it's a choice and you have the choice also of what of making it what worse that from today this house is on fire we will beat ourselves. It's a choice. Choice is like a double-edged sword. So my counsel is to what? Use it wisely. Choice is what? Like a double-edged sword. It depends on the side of the choice that you are using. So you use it wisely. So can we stand up to pray? Can we stand up to pray? Was anybody blessed? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. So I know that there are people that have made wrong choices, of course. There are people that have made partly correct choices. And there are people that have made what? Good choices. So if you have made a good choice, while we are praying this prayer, what you will be praying for is God help those that have made wrong choices. 
help them, show them mercy and restore them. Are we, are we understanding the prayer? Yes, sir. And for those that have made wrong choices, you know, there are times, like I would say to some people sometimes, do you know there are times that they would ask you that now all of this thing that is on ground, what do you think is the way out? Even you don't know. I don't know, has anybody been in that situation before? That they say, okay, now, blank check. This problem, now, how do we solve whatever you, even you don't know. So if you are in that situation, just say what? God, show me mercy. Do we understand the prayer? Yes, sir. If you know you've made the right choice, pray for those that would have made the wrong choice. That God, what? Show them mercy and restore them. But if you have made the wrong choice by yourself, ask that what? Father, show me mercy. Pray us in the name of Jesus. Let me hear you pray now. Father, mercy, mercy, mercy. Lord, show mercy, mercy, mercy. In the name of Jesus, mercy, mercy. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Over every marriage, over every family. Let your mercy speak. In the name of Jesus, let your mercy speak. Over every family, over every marriage. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your mercy speak. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. This week I prophesy over your life that your life will be sweet. Amen. Everything that is required for your life to be peaceful. God is depositing it in your life. Amen. This week, if you turn to the right, you will meet helpers. Amen. If you turn to the left, you will meet helpers. Amen. Everywhere you go, God will raise men to speak for you. Amen. Everywhere you go, God will send angels before you. Amen. This week, you will have a testimony. Amen. It shall be well with your spouses. Amen. It shall be well with your children. Amen. You are blessed in the name of the Father, Amen. in the name of the Son, Amen. and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For in Jesus' victorious name we are free. Amen. Amen.